So today's video, I wanted to talk to you about painterly uses for the gel press or the jelly plate. So these mono prints were all created, the ones I'm gonna flip through in a moment, were all created with a gel plate. And um, for these, um, these are all nine by um, 12 pieces of paper. And I created them with a little five by seven gel plate. And so I've been creating um, with gel plates since I was a child, essentially. Um, so before they even invented jelly plates, um, my teachers, who were all of the craft movement, we used to make these out of gelatin, which is why it's called a gel plate, um, and glycerin, and there was a recipe to make those, like a homemade version of them. And I continued this when I began teaching, and I would make them for the kids that I used to teach every year, and they were kind of a kid's printmaking um, material. And they would last a good six or eight months and they felt very much like the gelatin plates that we have now, like the jelly plate and the one made by Speedball. And now there's a whole bunch of knockoff versions. Um, these, the ones they have now commercially are you know, far superior. So a lot of artists really love them. But this particular process that I'm gonna show today um, is one where you can really kind of get into painting in a more painterly fashion than what you normally would see on a gel plate. So I wanna share with you some of the ones I've done recently, and I share this technique with my students. And I'm just gonna do a quick flip through some different um, ones that I have. So th this is a little series. So this is like a little garden series, just these two together that I did. And um, I'm gonna show this process. And then this is a little um, abstract or an abstraction. This one actually belongs to the previous um, grouping. And this is another one, uh, a little larger with a square gel plate. And this one is also an abstraction. And so they're super fun to do. And I really um, enjoy working in this way. Um, they're really, really fun. And I can't wait to share this process with you. So meet me back here, and I'm gonna get into explaining how to do this on your gel plate. You might be wondering why we don't just paint onto the piece of paper directly rather than doing the mono printing practice. So there's a lot of reasons why we mono print or do any kind of printmaking. Um, printmaking is a really spontaneous kind of activity. It's a lot different than painting. It's it's a whole different animal. And so um, when we're creating prints, that you have to give up the element of control. So a lot of it is, you know, you do, you are doing some pre-planning and you may be painting and stuff, but those marks that you're making are going to be somewhat controlled by the process rather than by your hand. So there's a lot of serendipity. There's a lot of surprise coming into it. You have to kind of let go a little bit of the end result, which is hard for a lot of artists to do, especially people who work really tightly. So you can really um, push yourself to um, have some new experiences and paint, especially if you're trying to loosen up your work. Um, the other thing is that, that since we're working with acrylic paint, there's the element of speed has to come in, into it because now we're working with a medium that dries really quickly. So we can't go ahead and paint an entire really precise painting and then print it off. We need to go quickly. We have to um, you know, make some really uh, spontaneous marks and then go ahead and print them. 
and then keep going with that um that little you know that little rhythm where we're you know putting down our marks and then we're printing and then we're putting down more marks and printing and going back and forth and you're going to get um a very authentic um you know intuitive creative type of piece of artwork and very different than your regular painting work and um, so printmaking and monoprinting is just really, it's a whole different thing than regular painting. And it's a wonderful thing to bring into your regular art practice. So meet me back here because I'm really excited to show you how to make painterly monoprints on your jelly plate. Okay, so what I normally do is I start out with two sheets of paper and then I'm going to use some painter's tape and just as the painter's masking tape because this comes off really easy and it doesn't tear the sheet of paper. Um, I want it to be even. And then I'm going to just take my gel plate and I'm going to orient it where I want my print to sit on my paper okay and that's not going to move and i'm going to be painting onto the gel plate here and you'll see that i'm going to do it a little at a time and i've used i have a piece of paper on the side that um uh, it's just uh, what i use for palette paper which is i use kind of old i use these old art catalogs as palette paper and then sometimes i reuse these for collage so if you're wondering why I'm painting on printed paper, that's why. And then I am going to go back into my garden scene. And you're just going to see how I do these, okay? So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of just paint like I was painting a, like a, a picture <laughs> here. And you'll be surprised um, that I am using heavy body paint. Um, for most of you, for most people who use uh, gel plates, we normally use um, liquid paint and soft body paint. Um, for this particular process, you can use heavy body paint, and that's what I use when I do these. So, um, yeah. It's, it's a little different. So you can go right ahead and get in there with your regular acrylic paints. So I don't want this to dry, so I'm gonna come over and I'm just gonna give it a rub before it goes any farther. Lift it up. Now, it, because I took I took the, um, the, the containers, well, I mean the, the covers off of this, it's sticking to my paper just fine. And it will always leave a little ghost on the plate. So I know exactly what I've already painted. So now I can go back in here and I can keep painting. And if I want to mix right on here, I can. If I want to add some more color or if I want to change things, I can. Um, yeah, so it's it's actually very intuitive and I can really plan out my composition if I'd like to. Um, it's, it's really kind of fun to get in here and play. I, I really enjoy the process of it. And if you've done gel printing before, this is nothing like you've probably done in the past with your gel plate. You're gonna really, you're gonna really like the process of this. Now I always keep a little um, paper towel handy and because I don't want anything too juicy on here because juicy is not going to help you out. All right. Um, and since I did the other ones at my other studio, these colors might be a little different than the ones I did earlier in this series, but that's fine. It doesn't have to match. All right, now I'm gonna go take another pull. So 
so you can't pull you cannot print the whole thing at once because if you were to do that half of it would be dry and you wouldn't be able to get a good you wouldn't be able to get um good prints from it so you have to just keep going and right now i'm going to paint in some flowers because i'm ready for my flowers i think um and i'm going to add some nice flowers into this garden my other ones were a little bit of a different color but that's okay i kind of like a little variation in my stuff anyway so So as you begin to, um, you know, develop the piece, you can kind of see where you might want to add more, um, more of this or that, and you can get back in and add those elements. And printmaking is always a little bit backwards, so <laughs> that's the other, it kind of makes your, your right brain work a little harder. So um, if you're not, always in right brain like some of us are you, it will it will definitely help you develop your right brain because it forces you to think that way that's what i that's the other thing i really love about printmaking because it really forces you to think in that way um And you'll see it'll start to build. It starts to build up and build up as you start adding your elements in. Okay. There's one little place I'm trying to get some more color in. Oh, I finally got it. <laughs> really don't be afraid to keep pushing when you're working here nothing is wrong I really like to get into these backgrounds and my advice is not to ever be afraid to get in there um, and sometimes I do them a little at a time but because the colors leave a little bit of a ghost um, you can kind of be a little bold and not not be afraid when you're when you're adding the background colors in. Don't be scared. Just get in there and add add the color and um, remember this is going to look painterly. It's not going to be it's not going to be perfect because it's it's a mono print, so it'll have some exciting elements in it. It's not going to be very precise because prints are never precise. But that's what we love about them. If you want to add a little in certain places where you think you need more color, go back right, go right back in and don't be scared. Be bold. Be bold, be bold, friends.
Okay, this is starting to come along. I generally like to add a little bit of a deeper tone on the bottom. It kind of grounds it a bit. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna sneak in here with a, I'm creating a, like a, a deeper burgundy color with um, some burnt sienna and um, getting some deeper tones. Um, I'm gonna go right up against my green because it's like a complementary color. Getting right in there. And I'm gonna get in there. starting to really like how abstract this looks. I'm loving the greens and the reds against each other. And now I'm gonna really get in here and try to um, finish up some of what I've done and really make some more dynamic marks in my piece. So I'm gonna go back into some of these areas that are green and yellow. I have a Naples yellow today, um, a primary yellow. Um, this is a light permanent green that I'm using in my piece. And I'm kind of mixing them all together as I go along and making different um, greens and yellow greens as I work through my piece. I've kind of got a little um, mixture on my palette. Um, I'm using a pale pink. I kind of look around, um, I look back and forth from my print over to my, um, over to my, my piece. And I see like areas that might need, um, where I might want to add color. Okay. And so that's how I, I try to find, um, places that I might want to add a little bit more paint. Okay. Um, if I feel like, oh, that needs a little bit more here or there, that's what I'm, that's what I'm kind of going for. And then I just fill in, fill in those colors. There we go. And I'm getting very close to being done here. And I love the way that this looks very abstract. And I think I'm probably going to leave this piece here. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for joining me.